Hi, I'm Tim and welcome back to another video. Or if you're new to my channel, then welcome to my channel. Did you know that you can control your Grandstream networking equipment from the cloud? Well, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to control your network equipment remotely from the cloud using Grandstream's secure cloud system. So keep watching this video and I'll show you how. Hi, so here we are at the computer. And what I've done is gone to the GDMS, which is Grandstream's device management system. And you can get to that by typing in the address, which is appearing on your screen now. So once you're at the home page, which you will see looks like this, what you can see on screen at the moment, you will see that there's a login prompt. Now, what you need to do if you haven't already created a GDMS account is click on the link under don't have an account, click sign up. Now, once you click sign up, you will then be presented with the following screen. So this is the screen that you will be prompted when you click on the sign up option. So you'll get create an account, fully manage all Grandstream devices and cloud services with one account. So pretty straightforward. All you would do is create a nickname, username, enter your email address and enter a new password and then select the user type and then confirm the verification code. Tick the I am red and agree to the privacy and then click sign up. You will then receive an email asking you to verify your email address. And once you've done that, then you'll be able to log in to the Grandstream GDMS system. So once you've logged into the GDMS system, you'll be presented with a dashboard like you will see here. And obviously there's no devices in the list at the top here under the dashboard because we haven't added any devices yet. However, if you don't see the same screen as what I'm showing you here, all you need to do is at the top in the left corner, you will see we've got GDMS networking. Now what you can do is if you want to also manage your PBX system in the cloud and your voice over IP telephones from Grandstream, then what you do is change between the two services. So you've got GDMS networking and then GDMS Unified Communications. So for the PBX option, you would select Unified Communications and it will then take you to the dashboard that you see on screen at the moment, which looks different to the networking one. So what we're going to do in this video is, as I've said in the introduction, is we're going to do the networking side of the GDMS system. So we'll go back to that by selecting GDMS and then selecting GDMS networking from the drop down menu. As you can see, this has taken us back into the dashboard. And at the moment, we've just got a system upgrade notification saying that there's an upgrade due. However, this won't stop your home network working. So it is only upgrading GDMS. So you can still continue to use your network and access your Grandstream network devices locally while the downtime is in operation. So once you've read this message, just click OK. And you should also get some pop up help notifications when you first log in. Now, all you do is just go through the messages that pop up various points in the screen and click through them and just get back to the dashboard. So it's really easy to add your devices into Grandstream, into GDMS. So all you need to do is at the left hand side, select devices, click the add button. And this will bring you a pop up window with an add device screen, as you'll see we've got here at the moment. So the first one we'll add is our router or router, whichever you like to call it, depending on where you're from. So in the name box, I'll call this ROUT01. And then what you need to do is you need to obtain the MAC addresses for each of your Grandstream devices. Now you can do this by logging into the device locally. And at the system information option, you will see that there's a MAC address in there for each device. Now just make a note of all the MAC addresses and also you will need to make a note of the device passwords as well that you access your devices with locally. So once you've done that, we can then proceed to add our devices. 
So as I've said, I've given it a name of ROUT01. And then for the MAC address, what I'm going to do is paste in the MAC address. And then you can then proceed to paste in the password that you use to access your device locally with. So once you've pasted in the password, you can select the device group, which will be default. There's only one selection there at the moment. So to set it to default, and then you can put device remarks in there if you so wish. However, I just leave these blank. So once you've completed those fields, all you need to do is click add, and then you will get a pop-up message with two tick boxes. Now the first one is automatically synchronize router local one configurations to GDMS networking. So we need that ticked. So what this will do is import your network one configuration settings. So your internet connection settings from your local device and put them into the GDMS system, which is what we want. So we'll leave that ticked. However, for the second option, we need to untick this because what it's saying is assign the SSID in this network to the newly added router. Now, what this will do is if you leave this box ticked, what it will do is locate a wireless network ID, which is set up by default in GDMS, and it will apply it to your local network, which is not what we want. What we want to do is leave our already set up wireless networks on our Grandstream network locally and put them into the cloud. So to do this, we'll untick this box and then click OK. You will now see that we've got a device in our device list here. And at the moment, the status light against it for GWN 7003 is actually gray. And it's saying it's offline, as you'll see. Now, within sort of one to two or three minutes, then this light should turn green meaning it's established a connection between the GDMS system and your router. So what we'll do while that's setting itself up, what we'll do is continue to add the rest of our devices. So the next one we're going to add is a network switch. So again, just click add, give it a name. So in this case, we'll call it SWIT01. And then again, and then once you paste it in the MAC address, again paste in the password and then just click add and then go through and add the remaining devices in there as well so i'll just continue with that and i'll come back to the video shortly now the last device i'm going to add is my wireless access point so we'll just again click add and it's the same process give it a name enter the mac address and then enter or paste in the password as well and click add and then as you can see, we've now got three devices with green lights against them, meaning they're connected to the GDMS system. And then we'll just wait a second and we should get the access point as well. So once you've added all your devices, as you can see, I now have done. We've got the access point, two switches and the router in the list of devices. Then if we now go back to the dashboard, so it's the top option on the left hand side here you'll see we've got an overview of our internet connection, router, one online, switches, two online, access points, one online, and also the number of wired clients. We've also got alerts here, so it gives you information about alerts and provides you with graphs here, bandwidth usage and current graph for the number of clients. We also have client manufacturers, client operating system, guest sessions, guest sessions by authentication and of course this will be populated and once it's built up a history so moving down at the left hand side we've got devices where we added our network devices into then we've got under that clients where it provides a list of all your network clients then under that we have guests and here what you can do is set up a guest portal should you so wish using vouchers so you can have a voucher scheme. So what you do is click add voucher group and proceed to set up the voucher scheme. Then under that, we've got maps and floor plans. So what you could do is create a map using a, for example, API. So a Google map API key, or you can use open street map as well. You can also add a floor plan. So you click on floor plans at the 
top right here and then add a floor plan and then give the building a name location and then what you would do is upload a floor plan once you've created the name of the building and the location then under that we've got insights so we've got a site survey so what we can do click detect and it's saying once scanning starts the access point will be unavailable for one to two minutes so we'll just wait for the site survey to complete one to two minutes and then we'll refresh it so i'll be back in two minutes and as you can see i've just clicked refresh after waiting a couple of minutes and now you can see we've got a list of access points in my current area so it shows you what channels they're connected to and whether they're using 2.4 or 5g and so on then under that at the left hand side we've got network topology so here we've got our devices so we've got the router the two switches and the wireless access point and of course this will be populated more as you add more grand stream devices to the gdms networking system so then under that we've got alerts so here it provides a log of all the alerts which is quite useful and then under that we've got settings and then for the settings menu we've got wi-fi so here you would create your wi-fi networks so all you would do is click add and then set up your wi-fi network with the various options so then moving down at the left hand side we've got lan so here you would set up various vlans and as you can see we've also got the default lan in there so then moving down at the left hand side we've got internet so here it's got the internet connection which is imported from the router so here you can add more one connections if you have more than one one connection then under that we've got vpn so you can have vpn connections using pptp ipsec which is site to site open vpn which is a good one and also wireguard which is one of the well-known ones as well so here under that then there's vpn user so you create your vpn user accounts here and then associate them with for example wireguard and then under vpn we've got traffic management so we've got static routes and then ipv4 and then ipv6 static routes so it supports both ipv4 and ipv6 so then under traffic management we've got firewall and security port forwarding wired firewall rules or wireless firewall rules rogue access points which you can obviously block out and then advanced security settings so you can enable SIP protocol and RTSP protocols as well so then at the left hand side we've got profiles so here you can create portal policy profiles splash page for your guest Wi-Fi portal port profiles so you can add port profiles in there so for example allocate different VLANs to different ports on your switches so all this can be done in one system rather than having to go into your switches and then your routers and create VLANs and so on twice so then at the left hand side we've got system so here is where you'd set your country and region and then you've got URL access logs as well guest information nat pool snmp and system log so you can add a system log server should you so wish so then the final option under organization is where you would have the overview so here this is the same so it takes you back to your default network overview and then you can also select location overview at the top so you can have more than one location in there should you so wish and you can also create different networks so here at the top you'll see we're in the default network but if you want to add more than one network so you can manage more than one network so you can manage different networks in different locations so then moving down we've got users so you can have more than one user on the system and you'll see we've only got one user which is myself at the moment but you could actually add more than one user and allocate them with networking roles then under that we've got upgrade so here you would upgrade your devices in a batch should you so wish so all you do is just check for firmware updates and this gdms system will actually tell you when there's an available firmware update so you don't have to check yourself manually it will actually notify you here when you log into the system then under that we've got report 
and here you can generate reports so all you do is click report to generate it and it will provide you with a list of clients bandwidth visitors within the selected network so then under that we've got change log so here we've got a full log of everything that's happening in the system and you can take the appropriate action so you've got a full networking ecosystem here with gdms networking and it's free as well so they're not actually charging you so what you can do is i've said before if you click on the top of gdms networking you can go into unified communications here should you so wish and should you have a pbx by grandstream then you can also add that into your gdms ecosystem so that's about it for this and i hope you like this video i hope you found it useful why not leave a comment are you thinking of using it or do you already use gdms anyway thanks for watching this video more videos coming again soon take care bye for now